to Adobe Live Winter Games Edition. How's everyone today? I see a variety of people in chat talking about comic papyrus. Thank you, Alex. <laughs> yeah, thank you, for, uh, Steve, for hopping in chat, asking the, the heavy hitting questions early on in the stream, like how much comic papyrus should Laz be using today? So <laughs> I am I'm really disappointed in you right now. <laughs> yeah, I've been trying to trying to not laugh through the whole intro, so. Without further ado, let Sean take it away. <laughs> well, okay. Anyways, I'm not going to be able to take any of this seriously now. Um, I want to thank everyone for being here today. This is, um, we're going to have a lot of fun. I am your host, Shauna Lynn, and I'm here with the very talented Alex Lazarus, also Hello. known as Laz. So I will just bounce between. I've never, I feel like I've never called you Alex. So you're just going to get called Laz the whole time. That's fine. Um, it works for me. Okay. Uh, and, you know, chat's very excited to see Val's already here and um, Val goes, and there's already been a name drop. Uh, yeah. And Val says, we will not be focusing on such font. Thank you, Val. Thank you. I, yeah. Sad now. And oh no, Annika says memes. Yeah, memes. Uh, <laughs> I was actually thinking, you know, for this snowboard design today, I personally know that I need a snowboard brand name. Oh, I don't no, know no, if no. you've already thought about your brand name. So maybe it's oh. Memes, maybe it's Memes. Maybe those are competing brands. I don't know, we'll see. My my disappointment scale is just going further and further towards <laughs> it's okay. Well, we, I'll let chat name my snowboard for me. Okay, We're, yeah, we, we do want a lot of chat participation today because I think it's gonna be a lot of fun. Um, but before we get started, make sure that you head on over to the Creative Cloud Express YouTube channel and subscribe to our newest addition to the Adobe Live lineup, Creative Cloud Express. Check out how to navigate easy to use the easy to use app with Voodoo Val, who's in chat. Yay, Val, snaps. Um, and if you're hanging out over on YouTube watching the stream, we'd love to have you over here on behance.net slash live. We are not reading the chat over on YouTube, so do make sure that you come join us over here so that if you are asking us questions, we do see them. Um, we're, you know, this is where the cool kids hang out. So come hang out with us because we're fun. And if you miss any of the streams this week, you can watch all the replays right here on Behance and Adobe live is hosting streamers outside of the Adobe live hours. So you can watch everyone else's, um, process and stuff too. Wow. How did I blank on that word? So Laz, would you like to introduce yourself and your work? Yeah. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Alex Lazarus. I am an aficionado of Comic Papyrus and pronouncing memes like memes. Uh, if you've been on Adobe Live before and you see me around, you've kind of seen that stuff as uh, pretty much my go to brand now. Um, I love doing skateboard graphics, snowboard graphics, all those kinds of things. So I am beyond stoked that you are having me on this stream, Sean. So thank you. You're welcome. I'm excited to have you because snowboards are fun and I've never done a snowboard graphic. So I'm excited to do this for the first time. I'm so excited um, to see what you come up with. I have I have ideas, so we'll see how this goes. Um, so so anyone who's just tuning in, we had two streams last week. We had Sid Weiler and Voodoo Val on and Val went nuts with the hockey jersey design we had. So definitely go and check out Val's piece because it's insane. Um, and some of the inspiration behind this was I am a huge fan of the winter games that are currently happening right now. And I am personally a huge fan of figure skating. I'm sure that's news to nobody um, <laughs> at this point. So if you guys are watching the games, like let us know what you really like watching because I want to know what everyone's excited about and what everyone is stoked about. But I thought it would be really fun to bring this to Adobe and create a winter games themed set of streams. So today, we are going to be making snowboard designs based on two different characters that I have illustrated and created personalities and color palettes for. If you want to join in, you can hit the info tab and there's a link in the info tab to the CC library, which I will pull up on the full screen here. And you can see all of the folders. They're separated out by day. Today we are in 003 snowboards. You can pop in here, see the character prompts. We've got Roman and Sage. So I believe Alex took Roman and I will be doing Sage. And then we have the mock-up. So if you want to draw along with us, download these mock-ups and we will show you how to use them. They're very simple. It's very easy to use. You update one layer and it applies to a bunch of other layers and it looks really legit. So I am ready to get started. I don't know about you. I'm so excited to get started. I have a quick little, little mock-up thingy that I did to kind of 
kickstart me, but I would oh, love okay. to walk through what you've, I know you built the character prompts and things like that, but I always like yeah. to start with just understanding like what's happening in the market before I start jumping into these things. Uh, so what I've done is quickly just pulled together some of the latest snowboard trends that I've been seeing. Okay. Long-term, typically successful uh, snowboard designs for the, like the last six years seems like uh, a lot of snowboard companies are bringing wood into some of their designs to keep it feeling more natural and less synthetic. And so you kind of have seen a lot of the Solomon boards right now are using wood with color splotches and some grid systems with some fun little typefaces. So I think those would probably be pretty inspiring for me. Um, mm -hmm. And then I've got kind of this like darker theme section where they've got like, I don't know, I would call it, I guess like Neo Gradient, like the new takes on some of the gradient designs and things like that. Again, still seeing a lot of like heavy graphic blocks and things like that throughout some of the graphic images. Um, that's the darker versions. And then I'm calling this area kind of like Instagram chic, I guess I would say. It's like got like a influencer lifestyle-y type photo where it's like Filter. a palm tree <laughs> and some yeah filtery gradient things, like even just like random photo of human inserted oh. on the board. So these are like, yeah, it's, it feels very like Instagram-y and in the moment. So this is kind of interesting. Yeah. I feel like that could also lend a hand to some of the directions that we're doing too. So that's just what I'm seeing in the market and kind of what might guide what I'm thinking. So. Um. Okay. Well, I actually did research too, except I did stuff that was older because I've Ooh. seen a few that I like. Um, so I have it up on my screen and some of Ooh, my favorites were, yours. yeah, years ago, Dana Tanamachi, who, if you don't know who she is, she's an incredible um, lettering artist. She got known early on for chalk lettering. She did these snowboards for Burton that are just incredible. And I don't snowboard and I would want it on my wall. Um, and then she's also done some skateboard designs as well. And then we've got like John Contino did a few designs and there's some really, really cool ones out there, but it's very illustrated, very lettering focused, which is what I tend to do. Um, and I thought that could be a fun, a fun jumping off point. Cause I'm thinking in terms of like, what is the snowboard that I would like to use? Yeah, these are great. I, I remember you showing these uh, examples years ago, I think when we were first talking about doing some like snowboards or skateboards together. So I yeah. love that you're bringing back the classics. It's great. Those are all yeah. bangers. Exactly. <laughs> Annika um, says, insert random photo of human note to self. <laughs> yes. There you go. Yeah. Um, Steve says, we'll be, we must see Teddy Bear today. He's again, he's on the bed. He's sleeping and napping and I don't want to disturb him. If he, if he pops over in my vicinity and he's within grabbing distance, I will pick him up, but um, don't, don't count on him popping into stream today, unfortunately. Perfect. Well, do you want to walk yeah. us through uh, your character Sage and I can walk us through Roman? Yeah. So like I said, we've got two characters here. So I have Sage and Sage, it's, this is her first time qualifying for the winter games and she's incredibly excited to perform and do her best for team Adobe. And she is quirky, adventurous, and eager. And her color palette is like my perfect color scheme. So I'm actually really happy that I got that I got to do Sage and that you chose Roman. Yeah, I'm super excited. So Roman is no stranger to the Winter Games, a four-time games qualifier. Roman will do whatever he can give, eh, whatever he can give to a good show and aim for the prize. His personality is wild, energetic, and sporty and needs a snowboard design. So I love that you've already started us off with some really strong color palettes as well. Yeah, I'm, I'm very happy with these. Color palettes are fun. And like, if anyone wants to join along, you don't have to, you know, stick to the exact color palettes. If you don't want to, if you see a color palette in a different character that you really like, go for it. Um, or if you're like Val with hockey jerseys, you stick to just one color shade of the entire spectrum that you're given. Yeah, so, I love this. Yeah. Shall we get to it? We should get to it. So there are two options that you can work on. We do have a standard... Um, just a snowboard outline that you can draw on if you want, or you can work within the mock-up itself. So if you want to work within the mock-up, there's a folder called your content and you will double click where it says edit this layer and you will be able to put all of your art in this folder that says your art here. So you'll just turn off the demo layer and then you'll just start drawing on your own layers within the within this and as you save, it will update. So if I just do a quick like brush stroke through here, 
We're gonna pretend this is beautiful. Um, I'm gonna hop over back to uh, Sage and you can see that the mock-up's already updated with the design. So I've made it really easy for you guys to uh, to put your own twist and designs in these in these projects. Yeah, this is super, super awesome. So definitely join us in this if you want to. I'm just super excited yes. to see what chat comes up with after this. Um, I am too. Make sure I if you do share your um, work to hashtag Adobe Winter Games because then we'd love to see it that way. Yeah, that's great. I would love a name if chat is so inclined today to volunteer some names that they're thinking about. No, this, is, this could either go really great or really poorly. <laughs> well, I think Memes could be a great name for a snowboard company. Just throwing that out there. No, mm -mm. no, no, um, no. What no, I'm starting no. off with is just trying to see, like I've got some images that I pulled from some stock photos sites, just to start messing with things and see how it starts to feel. Oh. Ooh. Save to my computer. <laughs> um, Viola says, oh, where do we get the mock-up? There's, if you go in the info tab, there's a CC library link. You go in there, click the folder that says 003 snowboards, click there, and you will see a uh, folder that says mock-ups. You can download them right from there. And thank you, Val, for linking to it in chat. Um, Steve says, I'm usually a skier, but on some days when I feel I haven't violently fallen enough, I try snowboarding. Amazing. And Wade says, I love Shauna's reaction to the Instagram picturesque one. Oh, creepy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. And Val says, it's going to go poorly. In reference to, uh, in reference to you us letting the chat pick things. Oh, chat's always my friend. They always do such a great job of helping me out with, with, with when I'm stuck on things. Just realized it would help a lot if I grabbed my colors so I could, I have them in my uh, file here. So I'm just gonna copy and paste. So I've got them outside of my layer here. There's also an outline you can turn on on your uh, Mock up if you want to, but I'm not going to work within it because I put a color down that will Because you're too fine. fancy for that. Because I am too fancy for that, exactly. I love it. But I'm definitely going to go for the like lettered illustrated aesthetic. I just have to decide. I was thinking I might do the word Pathfinder. Oh, that's cool. Because like you snowboard down a path. path yeah, yeah, path. yeah. I, I'm picking up what you're putting down. Yeah. Um, Oh, it's not in the info tab. It's in the description below the video player. Sorry. Thank you, Val. Appreciate it. I clearly did not look. Um, okay. So I kind of like this. I'm going to go for this darker, this darker blue, I think. Turn those off for the moment. So what have you been up to? Like what's, what's new in your design life? On uh, projects. For graphic, yeah, and I have not, and I really would love to do a surfboard. Oh, I could design. totally see you doing that. It'd be super fun. There's a brand that I love called Album Surfboards out of Southern California, and I think that they're just absolutely incredible. They do a bunch of like really interesting, um, like asymmetrical board shapes that yeah. make them feel really fun and fresh. Surfboards are wild because it's a lot of space to work with, and there's a lot of opportunity for design. Because I mean, I grew up in I grew up in Florida, right near the beach, so um, <laughs> I did not ever surfboard though. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I didn't like going in the water. The rule growing up was like you couldn't go in below, like past knee deep, um, mm -hmm. which that was my that was my parents' rule, and for good reason. So um, because rip currents and things. So yeah, who would have thought? Yeah. So we, my dad came home with a with a surfboard one day, and so my sister and I would like just paddle on it in the pool, and that's about as far as we got. Yeah. We're not entirely sure why he came home with a surfboard, but he did. <laughs> And then, yeah, snowboarding though, I've never done. 
I've tried skiing and it was a big fail. I used to ski as a kid and then mm -hmm. at the ripe old age of probably like 13 or something, I decided I want to be cool and snowboard. So I did that, okay. ate it a ton uh -huh. and had a lot of fun with it. That's my and then best. I've never gone back since. Oh, you, you strike me as the type of person who would, who would be snowboarding like every, every winter. I, when I was living in California, I tried to go out to Tahoe all the time. I guess I live in California right now, but uh, <laughs> I lived in NorCal, I guess I should say. How do, how do you like this, Sean? Is this looking pretty good right now? No, <laughs> no, 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 no. Why? Yeah. Memes why and comic you, papyrus? Why must you trigger me so? <laughs> <laughs> I think this is pretty sweet. I'm going to save this for later on. Steve says sharks can still get you at knee depth. Yes, they can, but you're able to at least see them at knee depth because it's not, it, the ground's right there. I, I um, love that, like, you know, for people who are afraid of the water and, you know, not wanting to deal with sharks, <laughs> Steve goes, oh well, yeah, well, they can still come out of your faucet, you know? Yeah. <laughs> like, you want that fresh water from your refrigerator? Nope. Yeah. Sorry, sharks are there. <laughs> Do you stick to rivers because you're terrified of sharks in salt water? Oh, surprise. Sharks can be found in fresh water. Exactly. <laughs> um, yeah, no, it's, I, you know what? It's funny. I actually love sharks. I am, I would not want to encounter one in the wild, but I do love sharks. <laughs> Steve says I'll buy one and Voodoo Val wants to ban me again. So <laughs> off to a now, great start. I love Val, this. You can't ban him. He's my guest today. <laughs> Can we ban Alex's screen? Now that is, that is an option. <laughs> Let's see here. What other things do I have? I pulled some wood effects earlier as well. I got some fonts. There's just so many cool things you can do with snowboard graphics. Yeah. And I'm trying to think like what I want to do. Cause I really like this, the like knockout thing that was happening on a lot of these too, where, mm. but Part of me really want to do like chalk style something. So we're going to see how this goes. But if we're going to do the word Pathfinder, I need to decide how that's going to look first. What is, oh, I was like, what is happening on your screen? I have like a jellyfish photo I got that I thought was so cool, or it's like ink splots. And now I'm just trying to like mess it up with some filters, but I don't want it to be like, Sometimes some of these filters can feel so obviously Photoshop filtered that I don't want that, but I do want some of the like less literal bits. Ooh, that's cool. Like scented edges really pops up the uh Ooh, I like that orange in there. Isn't that cool? I feel like there's a nice clash between like the color palettes happening. Yeah, it's a really nice um juxtaposition happening there. Mm-hmm. Kind of like the, you know, the battle for between good and evil in Star Wars. Am I right, Val? Hitting all the high notes today? All right. Here we go. Val was very excited because um, Star Wars jerseys exist. Hockey they do? jerseys. They do. Oh my gosh, that's cool. Yes, I had no idea. there's there's a team in Florida called the Solar Bears in Orlando, and they do special edition jerseys every season. They've got all these like special like you know, military appreciation, all like mm -hmm. um, breast cancer awareness, all those things. And one year they had a Star Wars one. That's cool. Well, San Jose Sharks does a pretty good job with them. Um, what's it called? Uh, like limited edition jerseys as well. They have one that was really cool that they did a, like a De, De Los Muertos oh. inspired one. It was pretty cool. I bet that looked really cool. I love the, the De, De Los Muertos aesthetic. Mm hmm It's a great one. Oh, that's cool. Okay, 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 okay. Let's see. All right, I'm gonna create a new layer and I'm gonna start fleshing out this lettering just to see if I can get something I like. And if I don't, then I just do something different because we have like two hours. And especially because we already know how to mock up these, we don't need to have extra time to mock them up necessarily. Totally. Just my um, curves. Oh, Steve, Steve brought up a 
Where's Where's General Kenobi? General Kenobi's not in chat. We have a shark upstairs. Oh, okay. <laughs> Felt. Oh no, General Kenobi isn't here. I hope, I sure hope no one decides to have the high ground. <laughs> Gosh. So let's see, design conversation. If, so if, I have a really good question. I want to phrase it right because I have it written down and I know I'll butcher it if I don't. Um, Is it, if you are a typeface, why would it be comic papyrus? No. <laughs> okay. Tried. I'm judging you so hard. <laughs> uh, no, it's uh, if if your dream project landed in your inbox, what would it look like? Oh, oh, that's a good question. Um, I think honestly, right now, I'd, because it's so topical, I would love to do a snowboard design right now. That would make me right. really happy. So uh, probably a line of snowboards for some brand, maybe Solomon. Uh -huh. I'm pretty open. Okay. What about you? What, right. would, what would your dream project look like? It, so there's like, I've got clients that I would, I would absolutely flip if they showed up in my inbox, which I've been very fortunate that that's happened with some, mm -hmm. um, but like the, the like ultimate dream project that if it popped up in my inbox would cause me to just start bawling um, would be Wonderground Gallery for Disney. Oh, what is that? <laughs> it is. So um, what Wonderground is, it's located in LA at, um, what is it? I think it's downtown Disney there. It's Disney Springs in Florida. I think downtown Disney and Disneyland. Okay. Um, and it's essentially their contemporary art gallery where they have artists doing um, basically fan art of Disney movies and characters and things. Okay. And um, they and they create like different merch out of it. But basically, like I would just be really happy to get to get the opportunity to do fan art for Disney, like officially. Yeah, um, that'd be sweet. And then they have at in. I think this is the, I think this upcoming weekend actually is the last weekend, but the Epcot Festival of the Arts in Florida, um, they have a underground tent where they'll bring the artists out to do uh, signings and everyone, they all debut like a bunch of brand new art that weekend. Wow. And I collect, I buy all the postcards I can because I like to collect the art and it's easy to travel back with. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. But, um. This year was a little harder because all the supply chains are a little backed up. So when I was there, they were, they didn't have a lot of the newer art. So I have a friend who is on deck who lives there to hunt it down if she sees it. <laughs> totally get that. Supply yeah. chains, man. Crazy stuff. Yeah. But yeah, that would be my, like, if it popped up in my inbox, I would cry project. What about chat? What would like, I want to know what the chat, what chat's dream project would be. Yeah. Tell us. So right now I'm trying to get my memes to fit like half the, <laughs> the bottom graphic. Okay. I do like the font though. It's so nice, right? Like it's almost, it doesn't really matter. That is what... an awful word. <laughs> <laughs> it's two words. Okay. It's me mes with a dash. <laughs> Where's the dash? <laughs> I didn't put it in there because I'm aesthetically not choosing to put a dash in there, okay? You're making decisions. <laughs> yeah, I'm just gonna rebrand them, okay? Okay. <laughs> Let's see here. It's pretty fun. I feel like I do like that though. That's I like that it um I like how the, the typeface all fits together. It's very psychedelic 70s. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've got so many fun little I'm gonna just make like 16 snowboards. Is that okay? Do it. Okay. I, you can make as many as you want, sir. I love that. I, Thank you. I encourage you. I will probably only manage to do one because illustration will take way too long. Yeah, that's how I, I like to you know, cheat to win in these types of situations <laughs> where I just like sit, start with a great graphic in the background, start with a 
the great typeface and just bust out amazing work really quick. There you go. Is that um, typeface from Adobe Fonts or is that from Tan Type? Uh, I got this from myfonts.com, I think, or you work for them. The typeface oh, okay. is called Molinolo. M O L E N I L O. Molinolo. Oh, interesting. Um, the, the, you know how they build like these beautiful little case studies and stuff and wrap it all up in a beautiful bow. Yeah. It had such great illustrations in the whole, uh, in the actual kit that they're presenting. I was like, oh gosh, it's so good. That's how they sucked you in. Mm -hmm. There's a, um, a foundry called tan type that does a lot of typefaces like that, where they're like that really psychedelic, like they fit together, like a perfect little puzzle. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, and I, I have spent too much money buying so many of them. Oh yeah. Well, Ono oh Type Co <laughs> does a bunch of really great typefaces as well. And oh yeah, they're good. They have some surprisingly amazing ones for just included with your Adobe uh, fonts, like subscriptions with your Adobe Creative Cloud. It nice. comes free. It's like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. Adobe Fonts is so handy. Mm -hmm. There's another um, site called futurefonts.xyz, which is one that you can purchase a font that is in, oh, yeah, so good. in development. Yeah, if, if anyone doesn't know what this is, you, what you can do is purchase a, a typeface that's in development from a different from various creators. And generally, like the earlier you buy in, the cheaper cheaper it is. You know, so you can get, but you get all of the iterations of it as it goes on. Um, so as they create more like weights and like italics, bold, etc., you get free updates for the remainder of time for supporting this typeface and the support allows them to take the time to create these typefaces. So I've had, I've had a couple that I've purchased through there that have just been real workhorses for me. Mm. And they've, one of them is uh, called Gooper and it developed, it looks like this old, like seventies, um, kind of like a jelly font, I guess is a way to describe it, but I love it. That's awesome. Uh, let's see. We have going on in chat. Um, Paco says, I don't hate the memes. I think they're growing on me. No, Paco. You're supposed to be on my side. I miss that. And thank you, Paco. I appreciate it. You're supposed to be on my side. <laughs> Dang it. No sides in graphic design. Um, we have... Jan says the dream project is creating animated wallpapers for Apple or something. Okay. Oh, wow. Like a 3D That's, one? Yeah, that would be cool. Um, Steve says that he's digging your memes. <laughs> snowboard. Um, Penny says that a Starbucks related dream gig would be what they'd love to see in their inbox. Like anything Starbucks, like you'd be cool with a cup or a gift card or whatever, or just like, is there a specific thing that you would just go absolutely nuts for to, de to design? Uh, Robert says, shoe design collab with Vans. That would be their dream. Mm -hmm. I can get behind that. That's a good one. That would, what would be really fun is if you could do the shoe design, but also design the box. Yeah. Or oh, and the whole store. That'd be pretty sweet too. Ooh, yeah, like an like an entire display for this yeah. one shoe. That would be cool. Um Ah, oh, Sam's here. Hey Sam, how are you? Steve says, I'm loving Shauna's font too. Thank you. I hand drew it. This is just my lettering style and my handwriting style. I write how I letter now. That is that is what's happened. Um Hi, RB. Welcome to the chat. Steve says we are working with Com Comic Papyrus again because Laz just can't seem to let that font go. <laughs> <laughs> underrated um, typeface. Oh, yeah. Apparently. <laughs> um, Ryan says a dream would be to collab with Aaron Draplin. Okay, that is, he's, he's a cool dude. Um, possibly work on some snowboard and skateboard graphics and maybe design some of his famous thick line art. <laughs> a 
<laughs> Mud's in the chat. Hey, Leon. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, Leon. How are you? My is dream my... collab is with Sean and Alex. <laughs> didn't, we do, didn't we do a collab? We did a pizza collab, didn't we? Yeah, we need like, to like do more. Yeah. yeah it's... Like we did we we did it like two years ago, but it still counts. Yeah. Um, let's see. I'm gonna actually... build a grid system and then do some more like spacey tech nonsense with this, I think. Okay, that works. If anyone's wondering, I'm using um my own brushes for this but Kyle brushes work very well for these projects, just so you know. I just have mine at the ready. But if anyone is just joining in, Alex and I are doing snowboard graphics for two characters for Team Adobe. We have Sage and Roman, and they both have very different color palettes and different styles. So I'm creating for Sage, Laz is creating for Roman. Yeah, 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 yeah. Arby, I need to design some cool graphic for my pool cue handle. You have a pool cue handle? That's custom? That would be cool. That's sweet. There's so many things like, I just want to, no, there's just not enough time in the day. I know. You know what would be really fun to do, and it's very outside of like my wheelhouse, but a um a beer tap. Oh, that would be cool. I yeah. there's a um agency slash designer in uh, Jacksonville, Florida. I know who Kendrick Kid. If anyone knows Kendrick, oh, yeah, he's Kendrick's awesome. awesome. Yeah, Kendrick um has done a ton of of uh, tap handles for I believe the Jacksonville Brewing Company. Or Bold, Bold City Brewery, that's what it was. He's done a lot for Bold City Brewery. Say that five times fast. <laughs> um, and it's a it's a brewery in Jacksonville, Florida. And I think he would get hired through the agency he was working at to do those. I'm not sure he freelanced it. I think it was uh, agency work. That's cool. But he's a he's a very talented, very talented designer. Um, <laughs> the hound says, how do you, how do you end up with just the handle of a pull cue? <laughs> I was kind I was wondering that too. I'm like, is it the full like pull cue stick and you just have to do the handle or do you have, or do you just have a handle hanging out at your, at your place? <laughs> we have, we have just, <laughs> just seeing like Leon asking those questions and like all the thought process that Leon probably put into this. <laughs> just like, why am I stuck on this fixation on the handle? It's so good. He's 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 the the real life version of that that gif with all the math around the head. Yeah, totally. Uh Norman's asking which what's the Memes font name? Which one? Good good human. Yeah, comic um, papyrus or the other one. <laughs> yeah, I've got comic papyrus as one. Let me turn off these layers again so you can see what comic papyrus looks like it's pretty amazing uh wow. that's the perfect blend between the two beautiful typefaces known as comic sans and papyrus and then there is the one for the jellyfish board that is called uh millennial i'm just making up words now all right let's see what it's actually called it is M O L E N I L O. There you go. Millennial? Millennial? Whatever. Saeed, I see you in chat. Thanks for the kind words. <laughs> Leon says Alex is the only one who can probably imagine the face I was making as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, RB says it's a pro pool cue that is in two pieces. Wow. Okay. I did not. Did you know that they separate? Because I didn't know that they separate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because I ordered a pool stick before because I lived in an apartment complex that had a pool table right next door to my apartment. And, of course you did. Yeah. <laughs> and then I bought pool sticks because the ones I had were really bent and I didn't want to play with them. Like, if I'm going to play with this, I'm going to really play with it. Yeah. The joke's on me, though, because like, I got them from like, Amazon or something, and they were already bent when I ordered them. Oh, no. <laughs> so, 
Yeah. Uh, I don't like my grid thing that I've been doing yet. I learned in, in the last couple of years that like fishing poles come in two pieces. Oh, yeah. Because you buy the actual like pole and then you have to buy the reel. Mm -hmm. And if you have a collapsible pole, then it goes into like four pieces. And if you have really bad luck, you're my dad and you get a brand new fishing pole and you go out to use it for the very first time. You go to cast, hit the bimini top of the boat and snap it and half the pole lands in the lake. It's <laughs> amazing. Got it for his birthday. He was so excited. <laughs> Poor guy. And then that was it. And I don't think he like, I think he brought maybe one backup pole. So he was just like, well, that's that. <laughs> <laughs> Liana and I have been trying to figure out how to uh, bring design aesthetics to a go-karting team I was wondering if you guys were going to do something like that with how often you've been go-karting oh yeah oh, we're fully committed now we are professionals by professionals I mean I'm still asking my mom to sponsor me. We tried to make my my racing logo on stream, uh, I guess a couple months ago. And if you wanna see more uses of the comic papyrus, definitely go check out that replay. I froze. Well, that was, I went, last week I had two full streams where not one freeze happened. And of course now I have one. It's all good. Darn it. Well. We're going to hope we had it's been the weather here really messes with like the internet connections and stuff. So I heard nothing of your conversation post, like post any of this. Um, and it looks like we may have lost my screen. So give me just a moment to fix that. Oh, looks like I'm back. Never mind. We're good. Um, Where do you get references for random charts and things? I'm trying to figure out, like, just making up random, uh, I'm trying to make little random graphs. Chat, tell me where your favorite places are to look up inspiration for graphs. <laughs> I use Pinterest. Um. Do you really? Yeah, I search Pinterest for a lot of different things. Hmm. It's very handy. You wouldn't, you would never, uh, you wouldn't think so. But once you can get through all the mommy blogs, there's a lot <laughs> of good stuff. <laughs> you think I'm joking? <laughs> no, I know, I know you're not joking. That's why I'm like, <laughs> that's the pain point that I've always had with it. It's very hard to get through that. You have to be like really, really specific. The only time I'm okay with like the, all the blogs showing up is if I'm looking for recipes. Mm. Cause you can't, you can't really get around that. Um, <laughs> Leon says google.com for graphs. Uh, thanks Leon. <laughs> um, Always helpful. And then I guess they, oh, we missed a, uh, RV says, what brush do they use and what tablet? I'm using a Cintiq 24 inch Wacom tablet. Um, and then I'm using brushes that I made. What about you? What am I using? Yeah. I'm using just an iMac Pro and my handy dandy pointer fingers and clicky mousey thingy. Uh, I do have a Cintiq Pro, but I'm not using it for this project. The 16 inch uh, one? No, I've got the like, is it the Cintiq, the touch screen, the one that's like. Oh yeah. Yeah, I've got that, that's 24 inch, right? There's 24 and there's 32. 32 is like massive, so. It's pretty big, it's a big one. I think it's, it might be 32. Dang. I know, I it's got spoiled over here. Yeah, it was, well, I was doing so much photo shoot work and editing work that I needed like a nice 
retouch. I, okay, I justified it to myself that I needed these things, All right? I, like, I, I, I do the mental I gymnastics of... <laughs> I, I am guilty of the mental gymnastics of, uh, d of do I, how do I justify this? Yeah. It's like, uh, you know, treat like, yourself. Yeah. Like after the last creative South I went to, um, back in, in like 2019, I had a surface pro that I was using and everyone had iPads and they just released the pro at that point. Mm. And I was, I was jealous because it took forever for my computer to boot up and it died very quickly. Um, because it was older and everyone was just like, boom, start drawing iPad. And so I came home and I was like, um, I, I'm going to, I'm just, I'm just going to go buy an iPad because I can. And my justification was like, the Cintiq keeps me tethered to my desk, but I really like to work away from my desk at times. Um, so I think an iPad would be great and I'll probably earn back the money it's going to cost me by, with the next project that comes in. And I did. Um, and I use it probably more than I sit at my desk. I get that. Um, question for you, my yes. wonderful Photoshop expert. Yes. I have recently reinstalled all my Photoshop, so I've lost all my preferences. Okay. What is the move that I need to do to click and drag on a layer without selecting the layer behind it? So I've got this really finicky graph, right? And every okay. time I try to click on it, when it's not perfectly clicking the graph element, it's clicking the layer that I'm clicking. How do I just, if I have that layer selected, click and drag it over? I'm, tr I'm trying to zoom in with my, on my computer to see what you're... It's a very, it's it's a like a preference somewhere and I forget which preference it is, but essentially right now, so if I click yeah. the, the dotted lines, I can drag, I should be able to drag. Yeah. No, it's dragging the image behind it. Okay. So I need um, to drag just this thing whenever I'm selected on it. Or every yeah, time right. I select it, sometimes- You have auto-select. Turn off auto-select and see if that lets you oh my gosh, be more selective with what you- Yes. Shana, I'm smart. You're a legend. Thank you so much. I've you're learned welcome. so much on this Adobe live stream already. I hope you at home are also learning along with me. There. Val says, uh, I use an iPad Pro and a Wacom, 60, si Wacom si Cintiq 16 inch HD. Gosh, what the heck just happened? Um, oh, hey, Alana, welcome to the chat. Alana says, used to be about that Wacom life, but now it's all iPad. Yes, I, I, I use the iPad as much as I can. And my only thing that I'm waiting for is for um, Adobe Fresco to support CMYK. Once it does that, I can use it for everything. <laughs> Penny, that's me justifying everything I buy for my dog, except she doesn't actually need snow boots and 5 million toys. Yes, they do. <laughs> they, yes, they do. Like Teddy has a ton of toys and I don't, it, it makes him happy. That's my justification. He loves when I come home with a toy and he gets to enjoy it and I get to see him absolutely enthralled and happy and that's good justification as far as i'm concerned that's fine that's great yeah um i'm on adobe hey, stock right now trying to find uh graphs things that i there might want to use okay that works yeah and pal says hey i still use a wacom sometimes but made the jump to ipad life yeah i years ago i when um Wacom had the Cintiq Companion. I, I did like that because I was able to be more mobile with it. Um, unfortunately, it was it was really heavy. It was it was a beast to uh to travel with. Great piece of equipment, just heavy. Um iPad, I without the case on, I am still like absolutely mesmerized by how light that piece of equipment is. Mm. Like it feels like a feather and it feels like I could look at it and it would snap. All right, so I'm still I'm still getting my my lettering out here. But I'm trying to like chat what what should I put like as the elements around this cuz like my my inspo is let me grab my 
like this is my inspiration. We got a lot of very like very illustrated boards. We've got a lot of negative space and a lot of florals. So I'm thinking like I probably should stick with the florals. Maybe I can throw some skulls in there. Um, but I don't know. What do you, what do you, what does chat think? What do y'all think? I think your floral stuff is awesome. Ah, oh, thanks. So I mean, skulls are cool too. I mean, pretty much anything you're gonna do is gonna be awesome. So just just do it all. Just make I it do. like a gigantic buffet of great creative from Shauna. <laughs> a giant buffet. I like that. <laughs> I don't like buffet kick lately. I don't know why. Buffets are great. Um, we have Norman in chat says, hi, Alex. I am a graphic designer from Lima, Peru, and I'm creating my website as a digital designer. Can you give me any recommendations or advice for the process and construction? Ooh, that's a good question. Um, I think anything, I think you mentioned it directly underneath it. It's like anything you're gonna make for yourself can be very complicated. Uh, and you can be a little bit hard on yourself and you don't need to be. I would say the best thing, I think oftentimes designers overcomplicate their website and it makes it very difficult to understand what's going on or get to the information that you're looking to show really quickly. So I would say, try to keep things simple. Um, I almost would say, I don't know if you're trying to code it yourself or not. Uh, my whole website is built on Squarespace. You can use Shopify, WordPress, Webflow, whatever you need to do to get the work out the door faster. But if you have a Behance, you get um, Adobe Portfolio too. Yep, yeah, Behance is gonna be a great option for a lot of people as well. That's awesome. Uh, it really, I recommend not wasting a bunch of time trying to custom code your website unless you are like a web designer, just because it's not gonna give you necessarily like the payback at the end of the day. Um, <laughs> and if you think about it, like as a hiring manager, you need to like impress whoever's gonna look at your resume and portfolio as quickly as possible. So try to keep it as simple and don't spend as much time in the the website building as you would building the portfolio pieces that go inside of it. Don't forget that that's like probably the most important part of your portfolio. Just makes me think of back when I graduated college, we we had to build our website from scratch. Like that was the requirement was we had mm -hmm. to build our portfolio from scratch. And so we were all stealing stuff from each other's backend um, coding. Yeah. So if one person figured it out, word got around and we'd all just steal it. Um, you know, we helped each other, but we didn't have the availability of like Squarespace and stuff back then. So yeah. I had to have my own custom built site for like three years post post graduation. And I cannot tell you how many times I broke my website because uh -huh. I'm not a coder. I know the absolute very basics. So all of these, like you know, Behance portfolio and Squarespace and all that has made my life so easy because I don't have to do a whole lot. Yeah, that's, I think the, just, just know where your strengths are and where your weaknesses are and then get help downplaying your weaknesses and mm -hmm. play up your strengths. And if you can't do something, don't advertise that you can do it and pay someone to do it for you. Unless you're really good at figuring things out and then, cause there's a little bit of fake it till you make it. Yeah, that too. But don't lie. <laughs> I guess yeah. there's a fine balance between like lying and giving your customer a really bad experience or, you know, sometimes some people will be like, oh, have you done X, Y, Z packaging? And you're like, no, but I've done X, Y, Z other packaging. I can figure out what you, what you need, but you know, I'm, so, I'm too honest. I'm like, no, but I'll figure it out. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's totally fine. Uh, Leon says your work is hand down the most important part of your website. The website is just a container for it. And it usually doesn't matter as much. There, I said it. I agree. Yeah. Thanks no, for I, I completely saying agree. it faster. <laughs> my, I um, had the opportunity last year to do my first children's book ever. And... Mm -hmm. 
I got thrown, I was thrown into the deep end in the best way possible because it was a children's board book that they wanted to have custom die cuts. Mm. Um, and the die cuts when the book was closed <laughs> had to make a whole scene where they stacked and it read as a scene when the cover was closed, but then when you opened, it still like read as it was supposed to. I had to math so much more than I ever do. <laughs> and my, I, I, every time I emailed my drafts and stuff over to my pub or to my editor, I was just like, if it's wrong, I'm sorry, please tell me. Cause I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> But it's in production now and they're like no it's great it worked out fine i was like okay i can't awesome. trust you like that's what the production people are for in the background like they fix all the stuff that i can't do absolutely um penny says yeah we had to learn dream weaver dream dream weaver when i got my dream yeah that's what i learned in was dream weaver we also Classics. learned flash <laughs> I learned Flash two years before it was like just completely, ex you know, ex exterminated. And I did consider though when I was thinking of like names for this, um, for the snowboard, I was like, oh, I could do Dreamweaver. Mm, classic, bring it back. I love it. Yeah, and then I was, but then I then Pathfinder hit me, and I was like, that's that sounds like a Witcher sword, and I'm a, I'm here for it. <laughs> Did you catch up on all the, I'm sure you watched it all lot when I was live, right? <laughs> I've rewatched it like four times. Oh my goodness. I catch something new every time, but now it's, it's one of those, now it's just, it's background noise. Yeah, I got it. Makes sense. Which, mm -hmm. like, what do you like to listen to when you're working? Uh, that's a great question. It really depends on the mood and what the project is. Um, Sometimes I'll be just like chill, chill hop, or whatever. Okay. Uh, other times I'll be like podcasts. Uh, sometimes it'll be, it depends on the level of concentration. If I'm listening to a podcast, I can't do anything where I need to be writing. I yeah. Need to be writing, then I need to have something like chill. If I'm just in like crank it out, get it going, get done, then I'll probably be like hip hop or rap. Works. What about you? Uh, it, it varies. Um, if I just need background noise, I play a bunch of, I just have like a YouTube playlist of videos that I've already watched before. Mm. Um, most of them are like by this uh, creator, Mr. Ballin, who does um, stories about like creepy disappearances and things. And a lot of them are about like cave diving deaths. Oh, um, <laughs> really really positive exciting happy stuff here but like cave diving scares me and also fascinates me yeah and i would never do it um so i have that or i'll like listen to like studio vlogs and things but it's usually stuff that i don't have to concentrate on um i've not done audiobooks in a long time because i would realize that i would start it and then all of a sudden i'd be on chapter five and i'd have no idea what happened mm -hmm. um so often it's just like, it's either YouTube videos or like a repeat of like a Netflix show that's just white noise or a random playlist from my list of playlists. Like if I'm doing something where I don't have to concentrate, I can do stuff that I'll just sing along to. But if I have to concentrate, like you said, there can't be any voices. I get that. And the, yeah. And the project some, will sometimes dictate that too. Like if I have to do something that's like really whimsical, I might put on like movie scores. Um, Got it. And then because Christmas projects come like in summer, I am known yeah. for listening to Christmas music in the middle of summer. No way. That's awesome. I was in choir in high school. We started Christmas in August. Oof. By the time Christmas came, you're just like, I'm, I'm a little Christmased out. Yeah, that makes sense. Proto mono is what I need. Proto yeah. mono, give it to me. Um, what about you, chat? What do you guys listen to when you are working? People are still talking about like Dreamweaver. They're talking about, I guess, a 
app that was called Front Page by Microsoft. That was a weird version of, it was like Microsoft's answer to Dreamweaver. Oh, um, interesting. PickSquire says, why are you not using pen tool to fill it up quickly? Because I, I'm assuming you're asking me. The way that I work is I'm, you know, I am a full-time illustrator. I, my work is very um, textured, very textural based. And when you fill in a path that's like this, where the edges are really crunchy and there's some like aliasing happening, um, let me turn off the sketch underneath. If I do a fill, you get this little halo that happens around it. And then right in the middle of the, of the letter, you lose this nice um, texture that happens where it doesn't completely fill in some spots. So that's why I don't do it. Um, it just, I, I like doing the long form, just filling it in. It's really good busy work for me. But it also, you know, gives me the look I'm going for. Like if you want to make things look like chalk, you use a pencil style brush and you just make a lot of lines. Um, example like this, uh, I have a pencil brush that I made, but like this would look like chalk from far away. So. Ta-da. Um, you can use Kyle's animator brush, I believe. is He's got an animation brush that works really well for chalk. Um, a lot of his pencil brushes work really well for a chalk look. So that's what I go for. Because my, my goal with the work I do is I never want it to scream digital. I want it to feel like it's got at least a little bit of an analog feel to it. So there's my long form answer. The answer. Um, Carl says loud, heavy music brings creativity to him and it calms his mind. Okay. Um, <laughs> oh, I think uh, I think Leon mentioned what he listens to. Oh no! Just, <laughs> just yeah. ignore it. <laughs> um, Jerkin says that they listen to chill music. Kyle says for them it's heavy metal or hardcore rock. Jan says podcasts sometimes with themes like tech or photography and often often to music. Um, Steve does old school jazz with no lyrics. Yes, that is a good option. I like smooth jazz. Um, there's some some modern jazz stuff that's really really beautiful as well. Um, that just like certain instruments, if I hear it, it just makes me feel really good. It just all the good feels come out. Um, there's one song, I think it's called As It Will Never Be. And it's a really beautiful jazz number with just a few like different horns and they all layer very, in a really interesting way. It's a lot of interesting chords that happen. Um, Syed says Bohemian Rhapsody while doing work and then doing some beat beats on the PC table. Wow. Uh, here's, here's where Leon's is. Neoclassical, melodic, Scandinavian, ambient black metal. Uh, and you and I know exactly what he's what he's referring to. Yeah, of course. We've been uh, talking about bringing uh, Boombox to the uh, the racetrack, but didn't want to get kicked out due to his what was that again? Neo melodic, Scandinavian black metal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Uh, Gosh, Val said, oh, and um, Alana says, podcast, YouTube videos, and Tiesto Club Life playlists. Nice. Oh my gosh, is Tiesto still doing his club life? That was a good a, question. It's a, a blast from the past right there. Yeah. Uh, Norman says they listen to Chill Synth Wave Instrumental. And Steve says it's Mal Davis or Coltrane that they listen to. I get, I fully support that. Um, and Val says, Shauna, did you mention where we can find the brushes you make? I have not. Um, you can find all of my brushes at creativemarket.com slash Shauna Parmesan. Um, they are available for purchase. And the ones I'm using are in the most recent pack I made. Um, so, and all these, all the brushes that work for Photoshop also work for Fresco. So it, it is, it's a very handy. What? That's such a cool board, lads. Thanks. I'm having a lot of fun with it. I got this visual, the this little HUD pack from Adobe Stock real quick, just so I didn't have oh. to 
make it myself. Smart. Work smarter, not harder. Exactly. Part of like, I think just the years of experience just comes down to like knowing where to cut corners. Yeah. And that always brings up to like an interesting um, conversation in terms of like, you know, people, if it takes you only 30 minutes, then why should I pay you for, you know, two hours of work or what have you, or why am I paying you all this money? Yeah. If it takes you only a little bit of time and you're paying for the years of experience, not, you know, not just the work. Correct. Like I have one of my favorite, um, I actually have a really great story that is in the medical industry that, um, works in the exact same manner that my, about my grandpa, hmm. um, my, my grandfather was an incredibly, incredibly smart man. And we unfortunately lost him um, when my dad was very young. So I never got to meet him, but I've heard many stories about him. And one of my favorite ones is he was, he was a heart surgeon or he was a surgeon. He was a very talented surgeon who brought over uh, medical techniques from the Ukraine. And he could do an appendectomy in six minutes. Wow. And at that, at the time, I don't know how long it takes now, but like at the time that was revolutionary, he could do it in six minutes, but they charged for 30 minutes. So he would do the appendectomy, finish it in six minutes. The, um, assistants would, you know, close the person up. He would go have a cup of coffee for 24 minutes <laughs> and then he would go talk to the family and his theory, you know, his reasoning was if I walk out there after six minutes and tell them it's all done, they're going to say, why am I paying you for 30 minutes or something clearly has gone wrong because that only took you six minutes. Um, but he's like, you know, you, you pay me for my years of expertise, not how long it takes me to do it. I get it. Makes sense. Yeah. So I've got a quote from, I think probably a voodoo Val in here on my, on this board. It says no more memes, no more fun. <laughs> oh my God. Just, just so you know, you're in here, Val. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, Gareth says, I laughed the other day when my tutor remarked that it was great to see someone sketching on paper and not digital. Everything I've done for my course has been done digitally. Ah, dude, sketching digitally is like, it sped up my workflow. So much easier to do it digitally. Um, Leon, is that in verse? He goes, you guys wouldn't get it. Is that in response to the music? Probably. I'm pretty sure it's in, I'm pretty sure it's in response to the music. Um, so we've got about 50-ish minutes left. So if you guys are hanging out over on YouTube, come join us at behance.net slash live. We are hanging out and reading chat over there. And that's where the cool kids are all hanging out. I forgot that you provided a color palette and I've just been doing whatever I want. <laughs> <laughs> Shame um, on you. you guys got to read the client's brief, okay? Just, <laughs> that was part of this. Like you, I know. you I even provided said, a brief. I even said, I love that you put together a brief as I just completely go and ignore it. It's great. <laughs> you can use just like a hue and saturation adjustment layer and, and make it happen. Uh, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be Roman's uh, team boss and be like, you don't get to pick anything anymore, Roman. You've had four Olympic or four yeah. winter games. You're, you're fine. No podiums. Come on, man. <laughs> um, have you ever, Leon, have you ever made a brush scan using, using, a, have you ever made a brush using a scan of Parmesan cheese? No. Cause I'm not going to put Parmesan cheese on a nice scanner. Oh my gosh. That's brilliant no. though. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'll right. take a, I'll do the, the lazy person scanner, which is take a photo with my phone but I have to actually get Parmesan cheese to do it. Leon goes, Alex Lazarus follows direction. Uh, well, Leon, I think we're friends on LinkedIn. You can endorse me. It'd be great. There we go. Penny says, I like to pretend that design is magical and complicated and no normies question this. Well, uh, I've had people, I used to use a, uh, um, the welcome into us where you're you know, drawing on the table, but you're looking at the screen. And I had coworkers that used to call it my magic tablet because <laughs> I would do photo editing with it. And they're just like, oh my gosh, what is this magic tablet? Yeah, that's pretty great. Um, he says, you don't need to put it on a scanner. Just use a photo. Val says, uh, <laughs> you can quote me on that anytime. Oh, I just <laughs> got a severe weather alert. Fantastic. Oh no. 
Don't go yeah, outside. Oh, you hit stuff on my desk. Yeah, if, if anyone doesn't know it, right now it's like 50 degrees here and it was 30 yesterday and oh, it's a flood advisor. We're above sea level. I'm fine. I'm safe. Um, now it's supposed to like rain really heavily today and then immediately like drop to 30 something degrees, maybe lower and then snowstorm. So we're going to wake up tomorrow to just like potentially four to six inches of snow. Wow. Gareth says use capture. That's true. I could use Adobe CC capture for my, for the Parmesan cheese. I completely forgot about that program. Uh, is that everything else aside? Are you ready for the storm? Ah, no, I just, I'm, I'm not going anywhere tomorrow. I am streaming tomorrow. So we have Hawk tomorrow on, on with us. Um, so yeah, I just, I, I have no plans to go anywhere. My car is in the garage, so I can, it's not going to get, you know, frozen shut. Like it did that one, the one storm we had recently. Cause that definitely happened. I had to pry my car open. Um, okay. Where is my color palette? So I have Pathfinder. There's my colors and I'm going to just. I don't need these to be this big. I'm going to take this down. So now I need to decide on, on like florals and stuff. So let's, I'm going to use pink. I don't know, should I use, I'm going to use like a mix, I think of pink and then this lighter blue. So it's not super distracting. Um, Durgan says, what chalk brush are you using right now? So it's from a pack I made and it's called extra crunchy because I'm a brilliant at naming brushes. One of my favorites I called this will be good for something. All right. How's this snowboard, Shauna? Just perfect as is. Just a piece it's of wood. Just beautiful. Thank you. Just beautiful. <laughs> you know what? I'm gonna pat myself on the back. I did really good with that with that uh gradient glare. Oh yeah, you did. Yeah, it looks great. Well done. All right, let me I can Hello do Leah. Welcome to the chat. Okay, let's see. I'm just gonna start. Oh, I do not wanna draw on. I am drawing on the wrong layer. Check your layers, people. You don't wanna do the wrong thing. I'm just gonna start drawing stuff in and we're gonna see what happens because this could be successful or it could be a disaster. I'm gonna just, we're gonna pray that it's successful. And I may change the, the color of the um, lettering as well. I don't know yet. I feel like it needs more green. Are How you bad actually do you think? Sticking to... What? I'm trying. I'm trying to be a, a good, good, good follower of directions. What's that, what's that quote from the Simpsons? You try, you tried and you failed miserably. The lesson oh, wow. is never try. <laughs> not, not a bad idea. Like one of those obscure quotes that I quote way too often. <laughs> oh, I like that. Yes, yeah, it's, it's cute, right? Yeah. Now I need to figure that out works. like what type face do I want to pair with it? Uh, ooh, I could get like... How um, mm -hmm. I just use Recolata, Recoletta, like everybody else does. Man, man. <laughs> Jan, says, Jan says, I have just published my Photoshop edit on Instagram with the hashtag. Awesome. I look forward to checking that out. Recoletta. Golly, this is gonna be so trendy. It's gonna be so good. Oh, I'm so excited. You just say golly. Golly, golly and trendy. Those are two things that your boy just said. Do we need a dash in there? That looks like a, oh, what does that look like? It looks like um like Abercrombie. <laughs> it's kind of got like a Cooper Black would be a good one on there too. 
Come on. That's a popsicle if I've ever seen one. That's nice. This is kind of nice. I like it. For his signature move, the popsicle. The popsicle. <laughs> just goes off the half pipe and just... <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if Cooper Black would look better. Do I have Cooper Black installed? Uh, oh, oh, thank you. Adobe fonts. Adobe fonts for the win. I mean, that's pretty cute. That's pretty cute. All right, let me get it away from the tail a little bit more. Uh, Jurgen, I'm using extra crunchy from one of um, my Photoshop sample pack. Um, okay, Val says, so Sean and Alex, if this were a real gig with a real client prompt, is there a point in the process where you would have sent an update to the client already? When and why, if at all? I'll let you go first. Okay. Uh, I think that this project would probably be really simpler, similar to my capsule skateboard project. Um, what I did for them, let me see here. I'll just pull it up really quickly on my screen. Oh, yeah, because you actually have like real work stuff. <laughs> yeah, there's like things on my pants. I'll put the things on there. Pro tip. Things and stuff. Put your portfolio on Behance. It's a good way to get hired and things. All right, so this yeah. Capsule Skateboards, I did this skateboard. Uh, I did all the branding and skateboard graphics for them. Let me scroll into the skateboards. So what I ended up doing for this was I had this initial concept around using like vintage photography from NASA and things that were um, commercially viable and like free to use because they were creative commons and then bringing in a little bit of like fun pizzazz to it. So the whole idea was centered around space and like space flight. Part of the selection process for like how I was building up the boards was kind of targeting demographics with like the, the toy aesthetic on the left side is much more like and then like targeted to the youths and then go a little bit more forward to like an older demographic on the right side. And so the whole idea with that was to like, I presented the spectrum to them. I presented three boards originally and like kind of low effort before moving on to like the other four that were needed. Uh, so that way they could actually kind of see the idea and the spectrum of like, how do we target different audiences and give each audience like a specific aesthetic that they're looking for. Uh, so that's kind of the update that I did. And then we kind of nudged some of the graphics throughout. Uh, but for this project and similar projects to this, I would say that typically the client's coming to me for strategy and creative direction beyond just like execute an idea that we have. So they gave me a lot of trust. And in, in turn, I showed them why that trust was valid. So yes. <laughs> And in turn, I showed them why I'm the absolute best at what I do. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> <laughs> take the compliment. I'll take it. Thank you, Shana. Uh, how would you go about it? Where would you give your updates on that? Um, okay, so I can actually show you what like a sketch that um, I would have shown a client would look like. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to though. I'm going to grab it from the other screen because I don't need, I don't want anyone seeing like potentially things that shouldn't be like client mm -hmm, stuff that mm -hmm, need, mm -hmm. can't be seen yet um, because NDAs. But this is one I did uh, for a domestic course that actually just went live today. Purchase it. Um, That's awesome. And let's see if I can find it. My, my folders are a mess for this project though. Um, there was a, a lot of, a lot, a lot of stuff. Um, okay. So Pulling it up, this is like, this is what the sketch would look like on my end before I'd clean it up. Um, and then what the client will get is something more like this. Mm. So that's what the, that's the first thing they'll see is something that's a little more like this where it's, it is still a sketch, but it's a bit more refined. And the only thing that they would not get is any color in this. Um, the only reason that this is color, this is a this is an example stage in the project. So this the lettering would continue to be fleshed out. Um, and they would just get it in black and white because I have found, despite the fact that I love sketching in color, it can really confuse clients. 
Um, so if I would say, like, I've had ones where I've sent off my sketches and they're in like blue or whatever. And my client, you know, my client's like, but, but we don't want it to be blue. And I'm like, it's not going to be blue. This is just, it's just pencil. It's just a sketch. Um, so I, I make sure to send everything in black and white regardless. So that's what they get to see is something that looks more like this. Cool. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. You know, and there's, and there are people that don't do as refined of a sketch for their, uh, for their clients, but that's the one that works best for my process. Um, mainly because then I have a very clear idea that of what's happening and what, if they approve the sketch, not much is going to change from like sketch to final. Let me see if I have, I have one more that I can share. Um, cause this is a project that's already, it's already been published. It was like last summer. Um, but this is a project for a magazine called Brio magazine. And they gave me a quote. They said, we just need this quote, let motivation today build a more confident you tomorrow by Trisha Goyer. All they wanted was a full page illustration with the quote lettered. Um, I had full reign. I had a color palette and that was it. Um, so they did not choose this sketch, but they did choose this one. And this is the one that I did work, move forward with. Um, I may have sent this one in color, but I don't think it, I don't think it, they noticed or cared. Um, it's like one of the few times that I've, I've truly, you know, I've sent something that I'm like, eh, they'll live. Um, because this is what the final became from that sketch. So you can sort of see that like not much changed between point A and point B. So, you know, that's, that's my, my sketch process. Um, I like to have as tight a sketch as possible just so that my client knows what they're getting and there's no surprises along the way. Yeah, that's fair. That makes a lot of sense. I wish I was one of those like people who could do a sketch that's just like insanely rough and sketchy, but I am just, I'm not. For my own sanity, it has to be really fleshed out. <laughs> yeah. There's also times I'll draw something and it makes total sense to me and the client's like, I don't know what that is. And I'm like, it's a hat. <laughs> they're, like, it's, they're like, Sean, it's a blob. And I'm like, it's a hat. <laughs> it's a blob hat. It's a new thing. Yeah. It's couture. There we go. It's couture, you wouldn't understand. Um, Maha says, I wish live was a thing 10 years earlier when I wanted to learn, start to learn Photoshop. Yeah, it would, I, I've learned more um, watching lives than I have, I would have ever thought possible. Like we had, um, what was the blog I had in college? Obdezito. That was like the main blog. We all had that in Swiss Miss. There we go. All right. So I'm on like 16 boards already, I think. How are you doing over there, Shauna? I'm just kidding. No, I'm I, on the floor. One, two, three, four. I am on one. Um, yeah, we and we still have like 30 minutes to go. So how many yeah. more do you think you can crank out in that time? I don't know, man. I, I, I This is just like my happy place. So like. I'm so happy right now. So thank you for letting me carve out my time to do this. Yay. I'm glad it makes you happy. This is great. That was one of my goals with this was just to let the guests just have fun. Yeah, this is, this is super fun. Uh, Am I liking this? Am I going to deal with it regardless of whether I like it or not? Yes. Once I add some flowers and stuff, I think it'll um, it'll help a lot. Oh, I did not want to move that. There we go. Yeah, because I have to do, I'm going to add like little flowers and, and things, so. Chat, is anyone working along? with us there's also a ton of other things you can download in that folder like an amazing um pin mock-up and i am i'm gonna plug that thing like crazy because i went nuts yeah that pin mock-up was sweet that was really cool i think i'm uh 
I'm trying to stick to the creator brief a little bit more because I went rogue really hard. You did go rogue, but it's <laughs> okay. I'll I'll forgive you. Thank you. All right, I'm going to rotate here. my canvas because I cannot draw upside down. I can't draw it like I can't draw the flower going down. I have to draw it going upwards because I have less control otherwise. Kyle's designing capes for a theme park right now. That's amazing, Kyle. Congrats, man. Capes? Capes. What? I know. All I can He's... all I can hear is is Edna mode in my head. No capes. <laughs> You don't, do, you don't know that reference? Incredible. Uh, of course. Uh, that's, uh, that's what I was, yeah. That's, that's, okay. Mm -hmm. I didn't know the character's name. I was literally just thinking oh. The Incredibles, though. Oh, okay. Ago, so that's really funny. It's the best character. <laughs> Who are you? Who is this? What do you want? <laughs> so, as an introvert, that, that's how I answer all phone calls. Oh, yeah. I just I just don't answer them. <laughs> if I it's don't also... if I don't know the uh if I don't know the caller or I'm not expecting a call, I just don't answer. So probably a pretty good idea. All right, I'm giving up on this random wood piece that I chose and I'm just gonna pivot. When in doubt, pivot out. I'm... Um, and Becca says, I think watching these lives has had the greatest impact on my graphic design skills. I learned That's about awesome. clipping. Yeah, I learned about clipping masks just watching Sid work. What specifically did you learn about clipping masks? All of the things? All of it. I didn't know you could use clipping masks. I was like, my my design pro my process way back when was really weird. And uh <laughs> Once I learned about clipping masks, all of a sudden I was like, my whole world has changed. <laughs> That's awesome. And then um, another one that I learned that I absolutely love that unfortunately does not work in Europe is um, using the, the tilde key to erase with your brush. Oh. Oh. Did you not I, know that one? No, but I'm... I you know, I'm a, I'm a, not the biggest brush user. I mean, I use it, but yeah. I'm not like a pro. Yeah, I'm what gonna... it does is it uh, it sets your brush to clear mode, so you can you can um, draw with your with your brush, and you can you don't have to have like a separate eraser. Wow, it's great. Um, the like long form way of doing it is to go up to your your palette on the um, when you have your brush. When you have the brush tool selected, go up to the top where it says mode and then choose clear. And that will also do the same thing, but then you have to make sure you turn it back to normal. Mm, okay. Why is this so bright? This isn't as bright as your color palette. Maybe, no, I don't know. That's, I mean, that pink orange thing is really bright, but I mean, you have that green in there, so it works. I do, and it's supposed to be the correct orange, but who knows? Leon says you aren't an introvert if you uh, answer your phone. Wow. All right, I'll make sure to not answer Leon's phone calls anymore. It's kind of getting spicy. I have a lot of different attitudes for Mr. Roman here. This is gonna be fun. Was one of the uh, was one of the attitudes I gave him spicy? Uh, energetic, but spicy okay. would be a good one. Energetic, wild, sporty. So I okay. think I'm, I'm on trend for, for on this pro model. I once had a pro longboard model. And one of the saddest parts about it was that it was all made out of carbon fiber. Oh. And so <laughs> that, there was really no graphic. It was just like a vinyl sticker on it. And that was about oh. it. And I still to this day wish that I had a pro model that had a sweet graphic on it. So I'll live How, vicariously through Roman. I say it's like, because most snowboards aren't made out of carbon fiber, I'm assuming. They're like, what? Like there, There's a lot of things that go into snowboards. They've got like a bunch of different composite uh, 
like materials and fiberglass and things. Okay. Yeah. They'll do like interesting things with the core as well. Like sometimes they'll have like a carbon stringer or some wood cores and things like that. Oh, I didn't know that. It gets really yeah. tech. With carbon fiber though, does it allow for it to have any kind of like bend or wiggle room or is it just like gonna, like it just won't snap? Yeah, so the carbon fiber actually can help ref retain the original shape. So like they're they're like with some of the Nike running shoes, they, they have like a carbon cup heel or something like that or heel cup or things like that yeah uh and that helps kind of return to original so if you put it in a snowboard you can get a little bit more pop that way so if oh, if, okay. it's, if you're flexing it it will spring back into the original shape again oh okay um carbon fiber is something that has made it into the uh figure skating world oh and there's a <laughs> I'm a, I'm about to just trash a boot. I I think it's the ugliest thing I've ever seen. Um, yeah. But there's a there's a boot brand that is 3D printed. Okay. Um, supposedly, it's very comfortable because it's 3D printed to a scan of your foot, so it's meant to fit immediately. That's cool. Um, but it is one piece of carbon fiber, and they have like they put like faux leather on it, so it looks like a skate, um, and the the hooks at the top are not like inset into the boot. They are screwed on, which also means they can pop off, which they have a lot recently um, with them being a little more out in public. Um, and the local skate shop here has has um, the boots on, on display because they will fit for them. And they're just, they're just so ugly. Um, I'm sure they're, I'm sure they're very comfortable, but they're just, they're ugly. Um, I had two different friends yesterday when I showed them pictures, described them the exact same way where they were. That looks like, you know, those cakes when you make the cake to look like a real object. Um, <laughs> but it, but they kind of just didn't do as well as they hoped. It's That's sad. Yeah. Um, but there are different, like. There a lot of brands right now are incorporating carbon fiber in different aspects of their boots um, because it is much lighter than the traditional leather boots. There's been a lot of um, advancements using that sort of thing. My boots are 100% leather and uh, cork and wood, so they are heavy. Yeah, I think we're going to start seeing a lot more uh, like 3D scanning and like bringing that into high performance gear, like as, yeah. you know, those things go on. There's, um, Jackson skates are using that technology for uh, custom fitting. So you can get your foot scanned and essentially get a boot um, stretched and adjusted to your, to your necessary like adjustments and specs, which is great for someone like me who has very hard to fit feet. X Choir says, I, Alex Lazarus, I think you are more of an experimental designer like me. I agree. But Pix Choir, do you use Comet Papyrus like I no. do? <laughs> no. Kick you off is what I'll do. Um, <laughs> yeah, Val, I will I will send you the picture, Val. You'll get a I feel like you'll get a kick out of it. Um Penny says, for lettering with brushes, how do you decide how large to make the raster file in Photoshop? I never use Photoshop because I'm paranoid I'll pick the wrong size and can't rescale. When I'm doing client work, generally I know the size that it needs to be. Um, so if I'm doing a full page, you know, editorial piece, for example, like I showed earlier, they give me the specs and it just needs to be 300 DPI, but I will work at about 400 just so that I do have that wiggle room if I need to increase the scale at all. So, but generally the stuff like doesn't get reused on anything else. So it doesn't really need to be that high. Um, but I just like working at 400 to be safe because you never know. Um, we have a discussion of, I have a little skull flower and Val is, is flipping out in the chat. Um, Val says that skull flower is everything. I'm living for him. Can we name it please? Can you call it Theodore? <laughs> yes, we can, we can call it the skull Theodore. Um, I love Voodoo Val going, Alex, this font looks, make it look like Hehe's. 
<laughs> like that's the Harry Potter, the um, Voldemort was eh, eh, eh. <laughs> a really awkward laugh. <laughs> Oh my god, click cool is that? Let's see here. I like that you have all these like fonts ready at the ready. Oh girl, I'll do my homework before I come in under your stream. I appreciate it. I yeah. don't I don't do I don't do my homework. I'm just like, I'm just gonna wing this. We're gonna see how this goes. I love that. That's that's also the correct attitude. That is that is chaotic energy is what it is. I, I just knew that you would be coming with your A game on drawing things. And since I don't have those same skill sets, I needed to make sure that I know how to pull typefaces. <laughs> That's fair. Let's see. So right now I'm using masks um, to add in line work to my flowers and such. And that's just so if I decide to change the colors, I don't have to change the color of like any of the line work because it's knocked out versus like drawing with the same color as the background. <laughs> Val's like, does it not? No, it does, it does. But you know, it's artistic, okay? It's an artistic typeface. It's supposed to look weird, okay? It's an interpretation. Yeah, this is how I interpret what a typeface should have looked like. Um, Val says, let's talk about this for real though. Any advice for design concepts that are better in theory than in practice, such as fonts or elements that don't look as intended in application? Oh man. I mean, uh, I think, uh, that's just part of the design process, to be honest. It feels like there's going to always be things that in theory, like I thought that I could make some of the wood stuff that I was trying to work with, like feel better and it just turned out it, it wasn't a good idea so i ended up pivoting in the direction so i think that's just part of the like creative process is getting comfortable with like try things experiment fail the questions mm -hmm. like i think as you get more proficient and you get better in your career you will start to understand how to quickly test things and how to quickly pivot them rather than spending a hundred hours on one direction and it turns out it's not the correct one just learning what that balance is and how to get out of that situation really quickly i would also say it's not necessarily failing it's just finding a it's it's like that quote there's no failing it's just finding a bunch of ways that didn't work yeah that's 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 a really good way of saying that too it's like all these things are going to help you make a better informed decision down the line yeah. And you learn as you go what works and what doesn't so that later on you can skip all those steps. You should just make Lorem Ipsum a snowboard company. I, I am actually surprised no one has done that yet. I don't know. Is Lorem Ipsum copyrighted? Could someone do that? I don't know. That's a good question. Uh, Val says, sometimes this happens to me and I feel stumped. Anyone else feel that way? Uh if I do something and it's not working and I need to figure out a way to work, sometimes I will just, if I have the time, I will table it for a day um, and try to think of it somewhere else so that, like, get my brain off of it so that maybe something will just kind of pop in my head. Because sometimes that's the easiest way for me to get get a solution if I'm, you know, trying a bunch of stuff that's not working is uh, to step away from it completely. Yeah, getting that fresh perspective or go for a walk, do something to to change how you're thinking or just walk away, go shower, do something. I don't know. Yeah. Shower thoughts are a thing. Like showering, showers are a great place to, to work out design stuff. Absolutely. Also, Shauna, I really love your mock-up. It's, it's great. So thank you. Thank you. I learned how to do, uh, how to do linked smart objects for this. <laughs> and it was, it was a challenge like for the hockey jersey that was a challenge because every like part of that jersey is a different smart object piece that's been masked but of all of them this was the easiest walk up yeah yeah totally <laughs> penny says sometimes literally have to walk away from it but feel guilty at first for wasting time it's not working i'm not going to make it the more i dig that's true more digging yeah. isn't necessarily the correct thing i think it's just getting comfortable with like how much digging do you have to do and understanding that that's okay yeah.
Yeah, it's definitely, I mean, it's definitely important if you, if you are able to step away a bit, it, it's really a good way to allow your brain to work through that, what you're trying to get through without sitting there and trying to force it and trying to focus it. Like if I'm having trouble with an illustration and it's for, you know, client or whatever, I try to book in enough time that if I need to skip one and come back to it, I have time to do that. So then I can work out all the others, get the easy, easy, quote unquote, easy stuff done. And um, then put it back, you know, go back in and see how can the other stuff influence this particular part. Yeah, I agree. Sorry, uh, Val's <laughs> roasting me. Uh, she says, I see that. I, you know what, I saw SpongeBob too. <laughs> Three hours later. Budaval says, Alex, this is not a complaint, but now it looks like the three hours later graphic from SpongeBob. If I had the coordination for snowboarding, I would buy this. I might want it anyways. Orange and yellow. <laughs> yeah, it really does I, kind of, yeah. I it agree. gives off that vibe. Yeah. It, it, I like this typeface a lot. I used it a lot during uh, that racing logo stream because I felt like it was like, like chisel tip Sharpie aesthetic. It's, Really, really quite nice. Yeah. <laughs> Three hours later. Yeah. <laughs> Penny, no, uh, Misty says, this is an awesome snowboard. Too bad Julia Marino had to withdraw from the big air competition because she had to tape over a logo that was designed on the board. Oh, wow. Interesting. Yeah, it was like a, and it was a copyrighted logo like you, that she couldn't have. That's that's interesting. There's been a lot of like weird withdrawals. Like one, she not have got, uh, an extra snowboard. I guess not. Huh. Like I like, there was one team that like they had to withdraw because all their uniforms were too baggy. Yeah, I don't. Remember, it was one of the one of the ski events. I think I just can't remember which. Um, Val says, don't want to toot my own horn, but I may or may not be on comedic fire right now. Oh. <laughs> I love Voodoo Val. She's my my bestie, my best I friend know. of me, <laughs> she says. We all, we all love Val. We have fun with Val. Um, Penny, it's in, on, about the like stepping away. Penny says, sometimes I literally have to walk away. I feel guilty at first for wasting time, but it's not working. If it's not working, I'm not going to make it better the more I dig. Yeah. see honestly i don't have i don't have the coordination or ability to snowboard but i still would love to have like a really cool snowboard just like hanging on my wall let's, let's get some made i wish that they were cheap to make like I know, skateboards are so easy to get made up i've never you know and that's the funny thing is i could probably do something like this and just do it on a skateboard mm -hmm. you know you same could. idea same idea different flex <laughs> All right, let's do that next week. Okay. Done. I like the plan. <laughs> That'll be our group project. <laughs> yeah, I love that. I am trying right, to race against to... the clock. You know, I'm not going to finish this. I'm going to have to work on this later today because there's just so much of this board I have still not done. But I'm I'm actually liking the graphic. Um, I'm gonna go pull up the the mock-up because like it it actually looks really cool on the mock-up as like an actual board. Mm. So I'm not upset with it. It's just gonna take me a very long time. Yeah, that happens. <laughs> that says best friend of me for life. <laughs> I'll take it. For life. Uh, I'm also going to stick more skulls in here somewhere. I just have to decide like strategically where they will be. There is a flower though. There's a plant that when it blooms, all the flowers that hang on it look like little skulls. Oh, that's cool. I want that in my life. I do too. I got really excited because like black tulips exist. Oh. Um, 
there's a lot of different flowers that come in the in a in a black variation and when my mom was like i want to plant a garden i was like i want black flowers and she she um humored me and we did get black flowers that's awesome i didn't know it was a thing oh yeah it's great they're in they're not like they're not a true black they're like a purple that's so dark that it looks black unless the sun hits it and then it, it reflects purple but um they're called like tulips they're called queen of the night tulips and then there's also i think van gogh tulips that are like they have like a really weird edge where it looks like it was like a serrated knife hit them okay oh man i just keep going back to the same typefaces over and over again it's not you have a style it's fine That's correct. Yeah. Don't let anybody shame you. You you have your comfort type faces is what we can call them. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. I mean, everyone kind of has their, you know, everyone has their thing that they always make sure to do or they always go to. And it's just kind of like your your little arsenal of, of design things. That's a good point. Meh, meh. Uh, maybe. Mm -hmm. This has been the most fun stream ever. I've never gotten to say memes so much. I feel like now it's going to end up being you're going to have to like challenge yourself on every subsequent stream. How many more <laughs> times? Like, like we're going to have to put like a meme counter in there. I love that idea so much. <laughs> and he says emotional support type face. <laughs> I like it. Um, Becca says, oh man, I love black flowers. Val says, there are black succulents too. Yes, there are. Um, Becca says, I went to a pumpkin patch last year that had such dark green pumpkins. They were almost black and I was very happy. Yes, I have. And I have purchased one of those. Um, when we when we first like moved here, my dad was like, let's all go to the pumpkin patch. <laughs> so, That's awesome. It was, it was fun. But I was like, I walked over. I was like, black pumpkin. And I, and I, they bought it. So glad that they humor me. All right, I've got that. Now I'm gonna bring it in. Ugh. here. Expire. The Pathfinder looks cool. Please make a bunch of skulls. It's up to you. Oh yeah, there'll be a lot of skulls. I just have to like get the leaves in there because once I have the leaves in there, then I can like fill in with the with the stuff and things things and stuff. This kind of looks like a whale tail. I'm not sure I like it. Maybe, I think it's just the shape of the flowers I did, or the leaves I did. Let's fix that. No sea animals in this. I thought you were talking about mine. I was like, yeah, I kind of got that going, I think. <laughs> no. I feel like it's. I'm actually not gonna be able to avoid it right now because I can't make these super long. So once I get the flower in there, I think that'll make a, That'll make a difference. Getting close. Right. Yeah, we've got about eight-ish minutes. Eight, I think. Okay. So if you guys have any questions for, for Alex, pop them in chat. We only got about eight minutes left. So if you have any burning questions, now's the time. Bring it on. Just try to sprint to this this end here real quick. I'm trying to figure out what oh my the are. <laughs> what is happening? What? Oh my gosh, that is so rude. You don't just go laugh at somebody's design work. Oh my gosh! <laughs> wow. Okay. 
<laughs> okay, that works. I was just, it looked like a weird, like Cartoon Network thing happening. I was very confused. Yeah. You know, Adult Swim has got the, the hot graphic designs now. So, no, I'm just trying to bring in some like some pinks, uh, break okay. my uh, brand colors a little bit more. Experiment a bit. I do like yeah. that um, that typeface though. I am very much into these ones that make really nice uh, shapes when they're. Oh yeah. Well, this is like I butchered it with the uh, the type path warp tool thingy. Eh, it's okay. It still then works. Noise, filter noise. Got to add that noise on that typeface because it sticks out right now. Leah says, no questions, just appreciation for both of you and Val's stand up, obviously. <laughs> Val appreciates you too. Yes. And uh, Val says, and full screened. Yeah, you are you are full screened up there. Okay. Don't just, don't disappoint us. I'm not, I'm trying not to. No pressure. Um, <laughs> See what this is looking like in Roman's hands. Yes. And uh, Penny says, this was a blast. We are so glad you enjoyed it. I'm having a ton of fun. It's a nice way to spend an afternoon. Hanging out with your buddy, drawing. Absolutely. And all of chat. I need more funkiness in there, I feel like. It's not. I, th I mean, you have that typeface. You almost have to push it even further yeah i need to time to break it somehow Ooh, snowboard party times i don't have enough wood what can i do in like no time at all i'm trying to just like finish this one side of this uh snowboard I always like to think I can I can finish on, in the span of a stream, and I never, I almost never do. <laughs> my my favorite part of any stream is the last like fifteen minutes. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's because it's like, you know, you're just trying to rush to get it, get it all done real quick. <laughs> the mad dash to finish. Absolutely. Now I need a hue. Penny says, I like the screaming them as uh, warp. Hey, Mark. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and Val's over there like bows. Don't forget to tip your server. <laughs> See, I can be funny. <laughs> All right, let's throw in some skulls before we... Uh, before we have to say goodbye love it so yeah i need probably just a touch of shading on it real quick and then i think i'll be good to i'm gonna walk through all the, the craziness we've made hey you've made a ton of boards meanwhile i'm like still on board number one <laughs> one not even one. I'm like half a board currently, but that's fine. It yeah, it it works. It's fine. I'll finish it up and then we'll I'll get it posted to to Behance. I need to also add noise to the type real quick. Oh, wrong layer. For those of y'all designing at home, adding noise is one of the cheapest easiest things to start making things feel a little bit more authentic and real. Full solid colors is sometimes very obviously Photoshop. So if you want to like add a little bit of noise on something or a gradient, it helps make it feel less computer generated. Just a tiny bit, not a whole ton. You're absolutely right. Cause that's what worked that made the pins look more realistic was making sure there was noise added. Mm -hmm. This is my least favorite one. I'm glad I get to wrap up on my least favorite. <laughs> so good. I like how yours, that one's kind of like a ghost going, memes. 
<laughs> it's gonna haunt Val in her sleep tonight. <laughs> there we go. Just like turn it into a sticker and just mail it to Val. <laughs> oh, can do. I need a. We did the goats and boats skateboard on her Adobe Live head-to-head uh, -head oh, thing. Right. And I need to still send her it. Oh, that was a, that was an interesting one. That was so much fun. Cool. We got about six minutes, five minutes. You about ready to start doing a review? Yeah. Yeah, we got like five ish minutes before we have to like actually sign off. So yeah, you go for it. You review the ones you've done and I will okay. get this pulled together somehow. Let me throw all these. I'm gonna rename this yeah. group. Least fave. All right. <laughs> So we started off today with a beautiful uh, Comet Papyrus uh, rendition. Um, it is just a very subtle, a, a little mouche bouche of a, a gradient ball in the background with a ghosted out Comet Papyrus on top. Um, you like how I'm like a sommelier for uh, uh, typefaces now? <laughs> So anyways, this is the Comic Papyrus board. It's big, it's bold, it's powerful, it is in your face. Um, and we're gonna go into our jellyfish version, a little digitized jellyfish um, using our beautiful Photoshop uh, filters. Uh, I, I do love like that one. Yeah, the type on it looks really, really good. I really love the memes with that. I don't even remember the name of that typeface yeah. anymore, but it's super fun. I like that it's kind of all wrapped up into one side of the the board. Yeah, it, it's a good balance. I think that's why it works really well. Yeah, I agree. But this is my comparison to the 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 Star Wars Force and Good and Evil, and then yeah. into the Velocity board, where I realized that I wasn't using any of the color palettes that Shauna has given me. Um, this one was all about you know, space flight and kind of have these like HUD graphics and some icebergs and things like that. Um, like this one a lot, distorted. And then I did a really simple uh, Cooper Black color swatch, um, like wood board with a dark wood. I think that's kind of fun. I think on a normal snowboard, this darker section would be, goes it out a little bit more opaque because it would have layers of wax and things on it. Um, and then I've got my tiger blood version, which as um, Voodoo Val has mentioned, looks like SpongeBob, uh, very spongy. And then I got my last project, which is my last board, which was my least favorite one. And that is this kind of like hippie psychedelic gradient ball ghosty one. So walk that us through your very... shadow. Yeah, that one feels very Scooby-Doo, actually. I think it works. Yeah, I got Scooby-Doo and SpongeBob. Who knew that it would be a cartoon, Saturday cartoons with Alex today? So. Yeah. Hey, it works. Um, okay, well, for my board that I'm still working on, um, my little character was Sage. She had a, I'll pull her up. Her template had this really nice little color palette and her need for a snowboard, quirky, adventurous, eager. So we have this. Um, I will end up filling it out a lot more later on because I really like where it's going. Um, we've got some custom lettering. We called it the Pathfinder and I feel like it works. I'm happy with it. I may play with colors a bit more, but I really like it. Yeah, so, I love I love what you've done with that. I think your type is awesome. And then just the floral stuff in the background, as I knew you would, you'd crush it. It looks awesome. Thank yeah, you. It's it's stellar. Yeah, well, this has been so much fun. I'm so glad you could join me today. Um, where can people find you? Uh, come on over to my Behance, be.net or behance.net slash Alex Lazarus. Check me out there. I don't use social media. All my stuff's there. Or if you want, you can go to my website at wearelazarus.com. Uh, but yeah, I, this has been so much fun. So thank you, Shauna, for having me. You know, oh, snowboards are dear, near and dear to my heart. So this has been just so much fun. So thank you. Yes, you're welcome. Hopefully, maybe you'll get a snowboard gig out of this. Who knows? That would be really cool. Actually. If you're a snowboard CEO or somebody who can make those decisions, come hit me up. I'm more than happy to help out. 
there we go. Well, fantastic. It's been so wonderful having you. It's been fun hanging out with you. I feel like I don't see you enough. So this is not, this has been fun. Yeah, it's been great. And uh, thank you chat for engaging with us. We had a fantastic time hanging out with you. You had some fantastic suggestions. It's been fun chatting. So I will be back tomorrow at 12 PM Pacific for part two of the winter games with Andrew Hawk rattle. Stay tuned for the creative encore of the XD daily creative challenge with Brandon gross. Adobe Live will be back tomorrow morning. Join Voodoo Val as she uses a Creative Cloud Express template to design a powerful, bold coupon that can be shared with your customers. So thank you, everyone. Thank you for joining us. I had a blast. Follow Alex on everything, and we will see you later. Awesome. Bye. Bye.